Michelle Brown, and I teach in the Broadcast and Electronic Media Department, in case you didn't know we have one. And students um, in my Broadcast 110 class, which is Media and Society, which is part of our learning community here, we've been already exploring this semester some of the influences that electronic media can have on our culture. And you saw that um, one of the, the reasons or causes of obesity that Anne had on one of her slides was media and advertising, and that's actually what we're going to talk about. Um, so in discussing the forces against eating well, electronic media is indeed one of those areas that we need to take another look at. And what we're going to do is take a look at one medium in particular, that being the internet, and how it's being used to influence uh, the food preferences that children develop as well as the food purchases uh, that they influence and someday will directly make. How does the internet do such a thing? Well, it might begin right here. So let's say, typical American household, perhaps a little girl, we'll call her seven-year-old little Anna, comes downstairs and finds a box of honeycombs on the breakfast table. So staring at the, the box, as we often do, Anna sees on the back panel that I've put a scan on the, the uh, slide, a nice little cartoon design, very happy and friendly, very colorful, and even I think some elements that you could call sort of a web style design. You see where the, the Postopia uh, logo is, and then there's gold coins underneath that. Well, as Anne is eating her cereal and is reading the box, because that's what we do when we eat cereal, we stare at the box, and she's noticing that all over it, it's urging her to go to Postopia.com to unlock some secret rewards, and all she has to do is get the code off the inside of the box. Whoops. So little Anna, like the rest of us, rips open the box to get the code. And on the inside, which I also have a scan of, it tells her that she can get secret levels, extra lives, bonus powers. Well, I'm already sold. I, I myself would like some bonus powers. <laughs> So naturally, she logs on to posttopia.com. So on Posttopia, Anna noticed she has her code here, and it tells her she can get rewards. And what she finds is another nice little sort of cartoon world telling her that she can input her code for some free post tokens. So what is this? So Anna's going to explore. And what Anne is going to find is not product information, not nutritional information. This is not a corporate website. What she finds instead is an online gallery of games. You see, each page has about 10 games on it. Looks like there's 10 games on the second page. And there's nine pages, almost nine full pages. There are 88 web games on this food company's website. They don't expect little Anna to spend 30 seconds here. They expect her to hang out for a little while. So what has little Anna discovered? So this is an advertisement and a game all at the same time. We call these adver games. And what they are is an online game in which a company's product or its brand is featured. And so we know this is a relatively new form of advertising. So what do we know about it? Well, thank goodness for media researchers, bless their souls. So now we do have some information about Adver Gaming. And in last year, um, in 2006, the Henry J. Kaiser Family Foundation released a comprehensive study of Adver Gaming. And what they did was take a look at websites and identify 77 of them that were food only websites, meaning these were only food companies. So it could have been Nick.com or Neopets.com that might have a food ad on it, but it wasn't counted. So only food manufacturers' websites. So they identified 77 of them and found that three out of four of them, or nearly 75%, included adver games. Now on some of the sites it was just a couple games, and on others it was many games. And they identified 546 unique web games specifically meant to sell food to children. And let me just show you one of the other. But here's another one. Candystand.com, this is run by Wrigley's. And again, across this top bar, how many games? Let's take a look.
All right, my hand's getting tired. So you can see there's a few, and I, I only have a few minutes with you, or I would show you some of these, and you would see that these are not silly little arcade games. These are sophisticated flash games. These are very well designed. And there's, I don't even know how many are on this site, but a lot. So why? What is going on here? Why are companies building these websites that are just full of games? Well, there's a little psychology going on here. Uh, one thing that food marketers like about advert gaming is indeed that it's obviously a very highly evolved, involving form of advertising, certainly much different than passively watching a 30-second television commercial, which we already know is powerful, and we've already talked about the influence that TV advertising can has, have on society. Um, and what they're also doing is drawing attention to the brand in a very playful and positive way. Um, creating this positive association with the brand, with the product, and what's key here is they're doing it for a prolonged period of time. So what these researchers found is that it wasn't unusual for the same child to play the same game 100 times or more. Simply because, you know, you start playing a game, it's got multiple levels, as all of these games do, and they want to beat it, they want to get better at it, so they play it repeatedly, and that's what they want. That's the point. Um, so this stands out from typical advertising or pop-up ads. They call this elective advertising because you're actually going to the website. It's not a pop-up ad that lured you there. Um, and what they also like is it allows for various levels of brand promotion. So that means it could be anything from the logo being in the background of the game to maybe the product even being an actual game piece. So honeycomb cereal, piece of the cereal, is the actual game piece that you're using in several of the games. And so if little Anna is having a good time collecting her post tokens, because you need a post token, which is a code, to play the games. You cannot play if you haven't purchased a product and received a code. So she spends perhaps a couple hours playing these games, filling in her profile and her account online. And the next time that she's in the grocery store, whoever takes her, her mom or her dad or whoever's with her says, Anna, pick out a cereal you like. Chances are Anna's not gravitating toward General Mills or Kellogg's. No, she's developing a preference for post brands. And that's because they're familiar, they're comfortable, they have an association that's playful and positive to her. And so as a child, she's already developing that brand preference. She hasn't spent any time with Kellogg's and General Mills. She's not interested in them. Something else that these online marketers, food marketers are doing is what's called a viral marketing, meaning a virus. And what they want to do is get these children who log on and begin playing these games to send a little invitation to all their friends. So you can get five post tokens, which is five more codes to play games, if you tell five friends to come solve the puzzle with you, or join you, or sign up for an account. And so they know that peer recommendation is very important, and that's what they're trying to use when they use that type of marketing. They also do things that we call extending the brand experience offline. So what that does is these sites will offer things to print out and color and bookmarks and stuff to hang on your wall. Uh, screen savers, uh, desktop designs, things that they can keep in front of them all the time in their everyday lives when they're not online playing the games. And I also want to point out that I mentioned it earlier, these are not corporate websites. Most of the time the corporation is not even in the URL address at all. Um, and they do not contain product information or nutritional information. These sites are created to, have, to house an online gallery of games. And so I think we can ask some, a few final questions. Being is this content or is it advertising? Well, maybe you and I can tell that it's essentially a commercial. But a child who has not yet developed uh, the cognitive or critical thinking skills that we have as adults, to them it's not an ad, it's a game. And it's fun. And so it, it sinks in and influences them in a way that it might not uh, an adult. Um, and so I ask if it's possible. Uh, when we talk about contributing factors to things like childhood obesity and diabetes, is it possible that something like advert gaming could be one of those contributing factors? And so I just tell you that the next time a product makes its way into your household with a, a web address splashed on the package and an urgent message for you to log on for various reasons, maybe think about that again. It might not be quite as harmless as it looks. Thank you.